Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery, and in today's video, I am going to be gold leafing the cracks in my bedroom floor on Modern Builds. Kintsugi is a Japanese word and technique. It is the art of golden joinery. Now, typically you would see this applied to broken ceramics or vases, adhering all of the pieces together and using gold leaf or gold flake to accentuate and embrace the imperfections. Not long ago, I did this on a DIY concrete and gold leaf coffee table, which I'll be sure to leave linked down in the description. And today I'm scaling that up here in episode three of my bedroom renovation series, and I am gold leafing my floors. In previous episodes, I removed the old carpet and painted the concrete floors gray, and now we can get started. Cracks in concrete come in all different shapes and sizes. None of mine are too large, but they do converge in some really cool ways. And my first step is to use some silicone grout to backfill all of my larger cracks and voids. This was my first time using this product. I thought it would be a good idea since it comes in a caulk tube and would be easy to apply into the cracks. But it turns out that silicone grout is not that easy to clean. I was able to wipe it down with a sponge and eventually get it cleaned up. But I would definitely recommend using standard grout for a project like this. I'm proud to say that today's video is sponsored by Scotch Painters Tape, and I'm gonna be using their delicate surface painters tape to mask off all of my cracks and highlight where I want to apply adhesive and gold leaf. These cracks were too inconsistent and curvy to mask right up to the line. Instead, I'm using the tape to mark and highlight the cracks that I'll be filling. At a certain point, some of the cracks were too small, so taping now will keep me from second guessing later on. I use Scotch Delicate Surface Painters Tape because I did not paint these floors long ago and I wanna make sure and preserve that finish. Remember, if you want it done right, hashtag start with Scotch and be sure to check out the links in my description to learn more. Let's keep moving. All right, it's game time. And for this whole process, you just need a couple of things. This is called gilding adhesive. It's a water-based adhesive and it reminds me a lot of contact cement. You just apply it to the cracks and then once it dries, you can apply and stick your gold leaf to it. I've also got an assortment of brushes in different sizes and the gold leaf. This stuff is surprisingly affordable and no, it's not real gold, even though real gold leaf is available. This is way cheaper though, comes in larger sheets and pretty much looks exactly the same. Links to everything I'm using are down in the description, but let's go ahead and get started. I took this project in sections and I would do one large crack at a time. First, I applied my adhesive. I used a really fine point artist's brush to work this adhesive into the cracks. I made sure to apply this relatively thick, that way it would get a good bond, but I didn't wanna necessarily allow it to bubble up and fill the entire crack. This stuff needs to sit for about 20 minutes, maybe an hour before it dries clear and then it becomes super sticky and whatever you attach to it has a permanent bond, including the gold leaf. This gold leaf is incredibly thin and easy to tear, so I placed it down carefully as flat as I could on the adhesive, and then I came back with a sponge to help seed it into the cracks a little bit better. I thought this would give a little bit more even and gentle pressure before coming back and wiping away all of the excess gold leaf. It really just flakes away super easy. This looks so good. And I did a pretty good job of putting the adhesive on cleanly. Don't skimp on brushes, get good brushes. I had some people recommend to me that I should use a bristle brush to remove the extra gold leaf, which I did try, but I prefer doing it by hand. This first crack did have some imperfections, but we are well on our way to an awesome project. Applying this adhesive really is the critical step to this whole process. You wanna make sure and be extra careful and be sure to get a fine point brush. The adhesive does flow pretty easily, so as long as you're careful to stay inside of the crack with your brush, it does tend to do a good job of applying cleanly. I also found it more convenient and efficient to cut my gold leaf into strips since none of my cracks were very wide. I really got fortunate with where the cracks in my concrete foundation were going. I think it's so neat that a vein of this gold leaf is going to go into my closet and it basically comes out of my walls and from underneath my bed. 
I tried my best to work patiently, but I did make a couple of errors, and the first one was applying my gold leaf without waiting enough time for my adhesive to cure. It just wasn't able to dry and bond well to the floor before I tried to wipe it away with the gold leaf. After making that mistake, I let the adhesive dry from here on out for the most part, and I really got clean results. In this shot, you can see just how neat it looks whenever I'm removing that gold leaf. I really feel that it looks better if you apply the gold leaf as a flat sheet rather than trying to dust it with a bunch of small pieces or a crumpled up piece of gold leaf. It tends to catch the light a little bit better so it's more shiny, plus I found that it gives a little bit cleaner of an edge. Man, this overhead shot is cool, and at this point in the project, I really was finding my groove. I was confident in my ability to paint inside of the cracks cleanly, I knew to wait and let the adhesive cure, and to apply the gold leaf flat to look best. Anywhere else in the project where my adhesive and the gold leaf had a hard time sticking, it was because of the silicone grout that I used. I should have thought about it. Water-based adhesive plus silicone product probably doesn't work that well together. Ultimately, I was able to come back on my second and third pass and get all of these small problems fixed. But I really just want to reiterate on this, make sure and use normal grout to backfill any of your large cracks or voids, not silicone. Now we're on the home stretch, the last crack of our first pass. I did this the same as all of the others, but I was extra careful because this is one of those primary cracks that everyone is going to see, and it converges with a lot of others. I let everything cure overnight and then I came back the next day to remove all of my painter's tape and start doing all of my touch up work. In a couple of places I got a little sloppy with my adhesive or my gold leaf or both but I was able to come back and cut it in with a little bit of my floor paint. I like this low gloss paint for the floor because it really hides imperfections and blends well with previous coats. In a couple of other places, I needed to apply new adhesive and gold leaf, but really I was just repeating the same steps as earlier. For durability's sake, I knew I wanted to seal this gold leaf, but I figured if I'm gonna do that, I might as well seal this entire floor. First, I tested this low gloss sealer in a location where the bed's going to be. Everything looked great, so I went for it. I used more scotch, delicate surface painter's tape to protect my baseboards and all of the woodworking that I've done around my flooring. No matter what your project is, scotch has a specialty tape or original scotch blue painter's tape to suit that task perfectly. They're available in store and online at Home Depot. One more huge thanks to scotch painter's tape. Links are down in the description. Hashtag start with scotch. The directions say that you can apply this sealer with a sprayer, a foam applicator, or a roller up to a quarter inch. Now I made a huge mistake assuming that my 3 8 inch roller would work fine. I mean, hey, it's only an eighth inch more than a quarter. But this created a big problem because it ended up applying too large of a coat with a little bit too large of dimples that weren't able to self-level the way that I'm sure this product is supposed to. This left a little bit of haze in places similar to if you allow water-based polyurethane that puddles or drops to dry. I don't know, in some spots you could see the brush marks where it just wasn't crystal clear. All in all though, I am still very excited about this project. I know that you can see some of those roller marks in these beauty shots that I'm talking about, but I am not gonna let that ruin my mood. The gold leaf came out awesome in execution and all of these mistakes that I made are part of the process so that you guys don't repeat them. I think it's so amazing how some of these cracks come out from the walls, they intersect with each other, they even spill over and into the closet area. Not to mention all of this was a huge experiment and all of these small mistakes that I've made, I've made so that you guys don't have to repeat. Really, I just wanted to find out that if this gold leafing idea was cool and would work on floors. And the answer is yes. I'm gonna be repeating this technique throughout the rest of my house now that I know how cool it looks. Oh, and once this room is furnished, all of those imperfections become less noticeable because a lot of that empty gray space is now covered by the bed and this rug. And one more huge thanks to 3M for sponsoring today's episode. So yeah, I could totally be bummed out about this sealer not curing properly, especially considering how cool the floors looked before I applied it. But that's not me, that's not the spirit of Kintsugi. And in reality, this project was a huge experiment and if you ask me, a success. Hey, thanks again everybody for watching. If anybody tries this out, let me know what sealer works for you. And we will see you next time on Modern Builds. Bye everybody.